Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn it into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. But like any good scientist knows, the best way to find out is to try for yourself, which you can do for free, like right now. So let's get to it. Well, the Dalton family made it. Quantum State Park, the only place you can get chased by tumbleweeds one minute and lost in a dark forest the next. This sketch covers electron configurations, which describe exactly how an atom's electrons fill its shells, subshells, and orbitals. And that lets you quickly identify the patterns of an element's valence electrons so you can predict its behavior. Even better, you don't need to memorize quantum physics to figure it out. All you need is the periodic table. Let's warm up with a quick reminder about electrons and orbitals. Electrons in an atom are assigned to shells based on their distance from the nucleus. The farthest shell contains the valence electrons. These electrons have the greatest potential energy because they have the least amount of pull from protons holding them in, which also means they're usually where interactions between atoms occur. Shells can be divided into S, P, D, and F subshells depending on how many electrons each shell contains. Each subshell contains orbitals represented by those little dots in the diagram. There's one orbital in each S subshell, three in P, five in D, and seven in F. Each orbital can hold two electrons, just like these double-wide parking spaces can each hold two cars. But since electrons repel each other, they prefer to spread out. As a result, electrons will always fill into open orbitals within a subshell before they start doubling up. For example, that means there will always be one electron in each of the five orbitals of a D subshell before any of these orbitals contains two electrons. That's why these cars have filled in in a single row first before starting to double park. Hmm. Maybe I should have thought a bit more before choosing a spot by the guardrail. Great view, but getting out might be tricky. The Aufbau principle states that electrons fill orbitals from lowest to highest energy. To symbolize this general trend, the Dalton family's low energy dog was the first back to the car, while their high energy pup is still getting her zoomies out running laps. She'll definitely be the last one back. The Aufbau principle often means you fill in electrons from the nucleus outward, or in order of shell number, but it's not always that straightforward. As atom size increases, sometimes the lower energy state means adding electrons to a higher shell before completing a lower one. In other words, electrons can skip around, especially once you get to any atom with more than three shells. When you fill out an electron configuration, you can follow the arrows on an Aufbau principle chart to account for this weirdness. It's pretty, it's organized, and it will get you the correct electron configuration in the end. But drawing all this takes a lot of time, and time is not something you want to waste on exam day. Luckily, there's another option, the periodic table. Not only is it already written out for you, it comes pre-organized based on electron configurations. I thought those rock formations looked familiar. The periodic table is organized into rows and blocks. Rows correspond to the energy levels, or principal quantum numbers, of an element's valence electrons. And blocks correspond to those valence electron subshells. The S block on the far left, for example, represented by the rock spires, contains atoms whose valence electrons are in S orbitals. This block also includes helium, or the rock up on the top right. There are two columns because the S subshell has one orbital, which can hold two electrons. The plateau represents the P block. Notice it has six columns for three possible P orbitals with two electrons each. The desert is the D block, and the forest the F block. The first step to writing electron configurations is to mentally add in row numbers alongside each of these blocks. The S and P block rows are pretty straightforward. They both match up with the standard row numbers. But looking more closely at the D and F blocks, things get a little quirky. Remember that as atom size increases, atoms sometimes start to fill a higher shell before completing a lower one. The D and F block elements are notorious in this way. Bending the rules is kind of their MO. 
So the D and F block row numbers are offset to account for skipping around as you fill the subshells of large atoms. The trails on the map are listed in order of increasing difficulty, or energy level. The numbers beside them match the row numbers that start each block. So the S block starts with row 1, P starts with 2, D starts with 3, and F starts with 4. There's also a disclaimer about those D and F blocks to help you remember they are a little different. Plus, the last time someone ventured out into that desert, they didn't return for days. And then all they could talk about was monkeys wearing pink sequins? Anyway, remembering this block numbering trend will get you 95% of the way toward writing an electron configuration. The other 5%? That comes down to reading the periodic table like a book, left to right, top to bottom. Just like this guy reading the guidebook. As you move left to right along each row, write down the row number and the block letter that corresponds to each section you pass, filling in all the orbitals until you get to the block with your element. Then, count how many columns your element is from the beginning of its block. This is the number of electrons in its final subshell. Let's walk through this using oxygen as an example. An oxygen atom has 8 electrons, which we know from its atomic number. It's also in the P block. That means its valence electrons will be in P orbitals. To get the full electron configuration, start in the top left with hydrogen and trace your way across the rows. The first boxes you pass are in the S block and represent the two electron spots in the 1S orbital. So row 1, 2S orbital spots means the first part of oxygen's electron configuration is 1S2. From there, electrons jump to the next lowest energy shell, shell 2, which means we jump down to the second row. The 2s orbital also accepts two electrons. That gives an electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2. Four electrons left. Row 2 continues across the divide in the p block, and there we find oxygen, four columns from the left of the block. So the four remaining electrons fill four of the six potential p orbital slots. That gives us a final electron configuration of 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Diving just a bit further, remember how electrons prefer to stay unpaired as long as possible before doubling up? Looking at an orbital diagram for oxygen, those four valence electrons spread out among the three p orbitals before the last electron is forced to pair up. This pairing or not pairing of valence electrons will come back into play in just a little bit. Writing out the electron configuration for small ions and atoms isn't too bad, but working through them for larger atoms gets significantly more lengthy. Iodine, for example, 53 electrons. That means its full electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. <laughs> I already lost my place. Since we're usually most concerned with the valence electrons, we can use noble gas configuration for a bit of shorthand. That sign reminds me, my gas light is on and I'd better fill up. Oh, and it's also there because noble gas configuration is a convenient shortcut. To write the noble gas configuration, use the noble gas you passed last before you got to your element. Pro tip, this is always going to be the noble gas one row above your element. For iodine, that checkpoint is krypton. Krypton's electron configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, or the majority of iodine's electron configuration. So replacing that huge chunk with a kr in brackets gives us a much shorter configuration for iodine. Well, this place is really starting to fill up. Real quick, before we hit the trails, the electron configuration of an atom can tell you a bit about its behavior. For example, having paired versus unpaired valence electrons determines an atom's magnetism. Recall that these double parked cars represent doubled up electrons, but the parking area also has some open spots. Unpaired parking symbolizes unpaired valence electrons, and any time an atom has at least one unpaired valence electron, it's considered 
paramagnetic. That's why this lot says parallel parking only and is filled with cars with magnet emblems. Oxygen with its two unpaired electrons is one example. Paramagnetic atoms display magnetic attraction because their electrons align with magnetic fields. Okay, this must be some kind of fuzzy dice collectors meetup. Guess I missed my invite. If all electrons are paired and the valence orbitals are full, like the filled up spots in this lot, an atom is considered diamagnetic. Ah, that explains the dice. Electrons of diamagnetic atoms align at a right angle to a magnetic field, leading to magnetic repulsion. Okay, the guide promised these mules don't spit like llamas, but that one looks pretty drooly. Anyways, now that we know how to determine electron configurations, let's look at what happens when an atom turns into an ion. Because ion formation involves changing the number of electrons an atom has, the electron configuration of that ion will be different from its parent atom. The sleepy mule with empty packs on the left represents a neutral atom. Oh, <laughs> so it's sleepy mule drool. That's embarrassing. The mule on the right looks a bit more charged up. His pack full of negative gear symbolizes changing the number of valence electrons to form an ion. Ions end up mimicking the electron configuration of elements beside their parent element. Kind of like how this mule is mimicking a racehorse and acting extra perky. Let's look at oxygen again. Oxygen typically has eight electrons, but when it becomes an ion, it gains two electrons, becoming O2 minus. That means it has 10 electrons total, and as a result, that gives it the same electron configuration as neon, a noble gas and a much stabler atom overall. Well, the sun's getting higher and hotter by the minute. Let's wrap this up. Electrons fill orbitals from lowest to highest energy, which is often from the nucleus outward. All orbitals can hold two electrons, but electrons fill open orbitals within their subshell before forming pairs. An atom with one or more unpaired valence electrons is paramagnetic, meaning it displays magnetic attraction. If all of an atom's valence electrons are paired, the atom is diamagnetic and will repel magnets. Electron configurations describe an atom's electrons based on how they fill shells, subshells, and orbitals. And sometimes, following the low to high energy trend means skipping around between orbitals of adjacent shells. Luckily, electron configurations are the basis for organization in the periodic table, so you can use it to help you out. Rows correspond to energy levels, and blocks correspond to subshells. When numbering the rows for electron configurations, the S block starts with row 1, P with row 2, D with row 3, and F with row 4. The combination of row number and block for any atom tells you the location of that atom's valence electrons. Reading through the periodic table from left to right and top to bottom gives you an atom's full electron configuration. For large atoms, noble gas configuration is a form of shorthand. It replaces the majority of an atom's electron configuration with the symbol for the noble gas in the prior row of the periodic table. This symbol is always enclosed in brackets. Finally, when an atom gains or loses electrons and becomes an ion, its electron configuration changes and ends up looking like the configuration for some other atom. Alright, that's electron configuration in a subshell. Er, not show. Time to saddle up and move them out. Last one to the spire's a rotten egg. Enjoy this lesson? Want to see more? Let us know by using the link in the description below.